Hi guys, my name is Lisa Whitehouse and I'm the artist behind Whitehouse Art. Thank you for joining me today for one of my mini tutorials. Be sure to hit subscribe if you want to see other videos like this one. Let's get started. Hi there. For today's tutorial, I'm going to be walking you through how to create your own splashy and colorful letter. For today, I'm going to be doing the letter W because as some of you might have guessed, my last name is White House for White House Art. So I'm going to be working on the W and you're free to follow along at home with whatever letter has meaning for you. So for my watercolors, I'm going to be using uh, a few different colors. I'll have, uh, this one's called Permanent Green Pale. I have uh, Cobalt Teal, Prussian Blue, Dioxine Purple, and then this one is Windsor & Newton and it is Permanent Rose. The colors are totally up to you. I just recommend that when you transition from color to color on your letter that you try and go from a color that is similar to the original one. So if you're going from a light blue, go to a dark blue, to a dark purple, up to a pink. So that way there's not a jarring transition and you don't get that brown effect. For paint brushes, I like to use a simple angled paintbrush as well as a liner brush. If you don't have an angled brush at home, another one that works really well is a round brush with a nice pointy tip on it. And that just gives you the control when you're going around the letter to make sure that you're not going out of the lines. You do want to have a little bit of um, loose water going around and outside of the lines, but you just want to have that control so that you can say when you do it and when you don't. So to get started, we're going to lay down a nice layer of clear water. I do that with most of my paintings. With loose watercolor, you'll find that you often start with clear water and then drop your color into the clear water. The amount of water you lay down will dictate how far the water, the paint bleeds. So because I don't want the paint to go too crazy, I like to lay down a nice sheen. And the way to tell what the right amount of water to lay down is, is to look at your painting at an angle. And you shouldn't see large bubbles of water, you should just see a nice sheen across the page. So that's all I'm doing for the first layer and I don't worry too much if say a blob gets outside the line or there's parts that have white showing through that's perfectly okay and I in fact I encourage a little bit of that to happen. So first things first I lay out how I want my colors to appear so in this case I'm going to start with the lime green and then go to the teal the blue the purple and then lastly the pink and there is going to be some breaking up of how I sort those colors but that just gives me an idea when I'm starting out which color to lay down first. I start by laying down a little bit of the green on the tip of the W. And then I'll come in and I'll lay a little bit of teal a little further down. And this is just the first layer, so there's no need to get it perfect on this layer. This is just about getting a nice background for your W, or whichever letter you choose. So I like to follow the perimeter a bit as well as go inside. And I like to overlap the previous color. So for this one, I'm doing quite a strong amount of Prussian blue. How you divide up your colors is totally up to, do, to you and the space you want to put it in. So I'm going to come in with the purple on this side. This is my favorite purple to use. I use it in a lot of my paintings and that's because it's a nice dark, strong purple. People often ask how I get my colors to be so strong and vibrant and a lot of it is just trial and error and checking out the watercolors in the store, trying them out at home. And if I'm not happy, I'm not afraid to get a different color and try again. That's the beauty of watercolors. It's a fairly quick medium, so don't be afraid to make mistakes. So if you find you're getting harsh lines like you see here, the easiest way to get rid of that is just to take a wet brush and just blot it out while it's still wet. And then you won't get those sharp lines. Now, so it's important on this layer while it's still wet to go around and add some of those splatters. So how we do that is we take a clear brush and dip it in a few of the colors that you want. So we'll start with the teal and I add some teal splatters in and around here. A few blue splatters here. Some purple. And lastly, some pink. And I find when you're starting out, 
sometimes it's good to use two hands with the splatters. So after I've done each of the colors in splatter form, I take clear water and then I add more splatters around. And that helps break some of those splatters up. So automatically when you hit clear water over top of the little droplets, they're gonna bleed out and they won't be quite as uniform. We don't want it to look too perfect. So this is going around the edge and getting rid of that uniformity, uniformity that you see on your first layer because we don't want too much of that. So just a few taps around the edge and that's all we're wanting for a first layer. So that's that. So now it's really important to let it dry up and um, when I come back, we'll do the second coat and finalize your monogram letter. All right, so we're back again with our dried painting and we're gonna be doing the last and final step to complete our painting. So for the final step, we're gonna be repeating the same steps we went to for the first coat of paint. So you're gonna to wanna to apply a nice clear coat over your dry paint. And for this step, it's not as important to have full coverage because you really wanna see some of that first coat shining through, especially those nice blooms you get showing up. It's nice when they show up through the first coat. So just kind of loosely applying a second coat. And you can kind of look at an angle again to see where you've applied water and where you need to apply more. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a bit more green right in this corner here. I'm gonna let some of the green overlap the teal. This creates a bit more dimension and a bit more interest. Watercolors always tend to dry lighter, um, so it's important to add quite a bit of pigment and then let it slowly bleed in and then dry lighter. So we'll move on and do the blue here. So you'll notice that the pigment isn't bleeding here because I left it clear. And I don't like to have those strong lines, so I'm just gonna massage a bit of clear water over top to have that bleed in. And then we'll do the same thing here. And then moving on to the purple. We're gonna go back and add some splatters over top, so we're gonna get a little more interest again that way. Making sure to clean my brush between each paint color so I get those nice, strong pigments. And then for the final coat, it's the same thing again. So you're adding a few more splatters. So this time I'm gonna go start with the pink. I'm gonna let some of the splatters go into other parts. And then I'll follow it up with a little clear water to make the edges a little more jagged again. And I'll move on to the purple. And then a few more jagged edges again. Clear water. And I'll do a bit of blue. Clear water again. It's easy to overdo it with the splatters when you're using color, but if you're just using clear water, you have a bit more freedom to make mistakes because you can always dab up the clear water and uh, it'll completely disappear. So if you go too crazy, always dab up that clear water if you don't want it to bleed quite as far. So here, I didn't quite like the way it went up here. So I can take a bit of paper towel and just kind of lighten that up. So that's all you're doing for the final coat. So now we're gonna let that dry. And as it's drying, what I like to do is as it's drying, just add a few more over top as it's drying. And that just gives it a little interest. Maybe add a purple over here. And that's all we do. And then for the final touch, I like to sign the painting.
And I'll add a few plank splatters just around there. And what you can do when you're all done your painting and the painting is fully dried, I like to give it at least 24 hours to dry for this step, is you can go back and erase some of those pencil lines that you see. The nice part about watercolor is that you can actually erase pencil through the watercolor as long as you keep it light enough. So once this dries, you're really going to be able to see some of the dimension, some of the places where I left it clear in between. You're going to be able to see the lighter coat underneath as well. Um, and I just find that's the really interesting part of watercolors. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you guys had fun. Be sure to check out my other videos for more inspiration and leave a comment below with some ideas that you want to paint. Thank you and see you next video.